Today we're going to be showing you guys how to play off sloping lies. We're going to cover the uphill, the downhill, the ball above and the ball below feet. We're going to kick it off though here on the 16th at the Asprey on the downhill lie. So come on then Pierce, let's get down there. <laughs> it was better than the warm-ups. It's a ripper. Pierce has absolutely ripped that over the corner there. We're here on the 16th, we've got 160 yards left. Quite a big downhill slope to this. And this is sometimes a, a really tricky one to play. So Pierce, just talk us through how we're going to play this shot and, and, and talk about club selection as well, because obviously yeah. that's important. Yeah, definitely. This is um, the, the, the key thing with all of these shots really is going to be balanced, but also understanding how the slope is going to affect the shot. So if I just take my normal setup here, you'll notice because I am going to be on this sort of downhill lie, I'm going to be de-lofting the club. So I've got my nine iron here. I'm actually pretty much turning it into an eight iron because of this slope. So 160 yards for me, it'd normally be like an eight iron. I'm going to be hitting a nine iron straight away. So I'm always going to be going with one club less for power. Now, the big issue then we have here is because the, I'm on this downhill lie, I have a more mass almost before the golf ball. So I've got a raised level of grass before the golf ball. So I don't want to hit that before the golf ball. So I need to lean into my left side a little bit. So that allows me to almost follow the slope on the way down. So you can see by leaning on this left side, I'm taking out this ground before the golf ball. Another thing I want to do in the setup though to help me because I'm going to put a lot of weight on this left leg is I'm just going to get this left foot and I'm going to flare it out. That allows me to get a little bit more coverage on the ground and it takes a little bit of strain out of that hip as well. Just show what a lot of people would do on this slope pit pierce. They would want to do that. They would want to sort of stay behind it and go against the slope but this causes all that sort of turf first and contact is just the number one thing on slopes. Yeah, absolutely. So we know it's going to go low, it's going to go further. We've got the setup that we need. When it comes to the golf swing then, all we really want to say to ourselves is we want to feel as though we get a normal turn on the way back. It's probably going to be more centered as a result of the ground stopping me from moving over here. So I'm going to be more centered when I go back. But the big key from here really is, as I hit the shot, I've got to stick the finish. I don't want to be trying to lift it and hit it off the back foot. I've got to accept that I'm going to go onto my left foot. And even Andy, it's not the end of the world if we step after it. Definitely not. It's raining. It's in the middle. Oh, of, no. It's summer in the middle oh, of England. No. This is what we expect for summer in the UK. Yes. So yeah, allowing the club to swing down the slope is key. Okay. So let's okay. do this. Let's see if I can hit one, and I'm going to stick that finish. Notice the weight on that lead side. It's going to go lower. There it goes a lot lower, but I'm got my balance on that left side. The left side of the green. Oh, yeah, just. Okay, right, so that is the downhill lie. Let's head to the 17th and do the ball below. It's going to go lower. There it goes a lot lower, but I've got my balance on that left side. The left side of the green, oh, yeah, just. Okay, right, so that is the downhill lie. Let's head to the 17th and do the ball below. So I think this is the hardest of the four, the ball below the feet. Interested to get your thoughts. What do you find the hardest out of all the slopes? Let us know down below in the comments. Okay, Pierce, so look, quite a big slope here on the 17th. Yes. 155 yards to the flag. Yep. How's this slope going to affect the shot and then what can we do to make it easier? Because that's what we're really trying to do. Absolutely. Aren't we? Look, you're right. It is a severe one. You may have to catch me on this one. So again, understand what it's going to do to the ball flight. So when we have the ball below, it's going to make the golf club more upright. It's going to make my swing more upright. So there's a lot more chance then of the golf ball curving out to the right for the right-handed golfer. So I need to aim to, to the left to allow for that fade that I'm going to get. And it kind of makes sense, Andy, when you're playing a fade and when your balance is compromised so much that you may not be able to get as much distance. So you can definitely go for a, a longer club. So 155, it's kind of like a nine iron maybe for me. I'm going to go eight iron just to allow for the fact okay. it's going to, hit, going to have that fade and be a less powerful golf swing. So what do we need to do in the setup and the swing then to play the shot then, Pierce? Okay, so obviously we need to aim left. So I'm going to be aiming now that flag, as you can see, slightly on the right-hand side. It's actually quite a nice flag for this, but I'm going to be aiming pretty much over the middle of that bunker and Reaches maybe a little bit more as, well. as he throws the grass up and sees the wind going that way. But yeah, I'm going to go middle of the bunker on the left there. So I think, again, we have to understand when the golf ball is below the level of the feet, it means it's further away from you. So you need to get closer to it. So a couple of ways to do that. Widen the stance. Definitely make sure you never choke down the handle when playing these shots. But you, the big key really is get more flex in those legs. And then from there, when you're playing this shot, 
the ideal thing for you is to keep that flex in those legs. We're not trying to sort of jump up maybe and get loads of power. We just need to get a solid strike on the golf ball here. Yeah. So aiming left, wide stance, lots of leg flex. And then from there, all I'm really saying to myself now, as I said just briefly before was, I've got to keep that leg flex throughout and just do my best to hold the balance. Definitely, it's gonna be a little bit more restricted in the golf swing as well, because a lot of flex in the legs, we can't really turn. Therefore, it's gonna be a slightly shorter swing, a little bit more upright, but we just really wanna keep that balance so we can get the contact. Yeah, absolutely. This is, as you said, this is a tough one. This is actually quite a severe one. Thanks for this one. No problem. Wind off the left as well. My okay. turn on the other two, so we're Yeah, okay. we'll find a real difficult spot for you. Okay, so all about balance. Keep the flex, keep the balance. That's nice. Really nice. Again, that's working toward the flag. Landed. Yeah, nice shot. Down flat to a little. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so let's head to the sixth hole and let's do the uphill line. Right then, Andy, we've got the upslope. What are we going to do on this one? Well, okay, we've already done the down slope. Now, with the down slope, obviously, we want to go with the slope. Now, some people might think that you're going to go with the slope on the upslope as well, but we're actually going to do something a little different. Now, the majority of amateurs that we see tend to actually struggle and get the club bottoming out before the golf ball. Now, if you go with the upslope on this one, there's even more chance that you're going to hit the ground before the golf ball or even thin it and potentially get it too high. So what we're going to do on this one is actually go slightly against the slope. So first of all here, a little bit of weight on the lead leg here like this. Now what this is going to do is it's going to get me now hitting more into the slope, which means there's a better chance of me hitting the ball first. Plus here, I'm probably going to get a little bit more turf than I would if I was going to go all the way back on the right side. Now, because of the slope as well, because I'm hitting up a slope here, then what I'm going to see, I'm going to see a little bit more height. Therefore, I'm going to hit one more club. I've got 120 yards to the flag here, which is my gap wedge normally. I'm going to go with a wedge, probably a sort of a smoother wedge than normal yeah. as well. But I think in this situation, avoid going on the right side, lean into the slope, and then from here, like I say, you're just gonna try and create a normal swing as you can. The slope's gonna to wanna to push you back, so that's where it's gonna sort of neutralize it out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and definitely when you're hitting into these slopes as well, the last thing you wanna be doing is whacking it as hard as you can. You've gotta understand that club is gonna stop pretty quickly. Exactly. So, so it is gonna go high still, Andy, even though you may take a little bit of loft off by hitting the yeah, pitching exactly, wedge. Exactly, yeah. So I'm not gonna lean massively into it. I'm just gonna favor the lead leg a little bit. And I should have a little bit of turf on this one as well. Yeah, you can see restricted uh, movements with your legs on the way Ooh, through. The launch on that one. Can't really turn through, as you mentioned there, Pierce. I'm stuck on there. Plenty of divot after the ball there. And I'm probably just maybe 10 feet left of the flag there. So I'll be pretty happy with that one. Yeah, pretty good. All right, we've got one more, the ball above. Right then, Andy, you're on the eighth fairway. You've got 185 to the flag and you've yep. got a magnet in your hand. What yes. are you doing with that? Well, this is just going to help us understand what the slope's going to do to the ball flight. And I think this, is, this isn't that severe of a ball above feet, mm -hmm. but you are going to get some circumstances where the ball might be quite aggressive. And it's just really help, helpful to see what's going to happen. So I'm just going to place this on the club face here. Now, if I just lift the club up slightly more than obviously where the ball is now, what you'll notice here is where the loft is pointing. The loft is pointing left. So, What's going to happen here is the golf ball is going, going to want to go left and it's also going to want to curve left as well. So this is going to influence really how we set up and allow for it. It is interesting, isn't it? Because we generally when we aim, we're thinking about the leading edge, aren't we? Exactly. As soon as this slope comes into play, though, massive difference, especially with the that. short irons as exactly. well. It's Look huge. how much that's pointing left now. But obviously it's only severe here, so you can judge this based on the slope. So in order to get me hitting the golf ball to the target now, I'm going to allow for me in the setup. So we'll get rid of that. First thing I'm going to make sure I do is aim to the right. So for me here, I'm going to probably aim at the, maybe just the corner of the bunker on the right. Wind's down off the right as well, yeah. so it's probably going to help me a little bit. So from here, aiming slightly to the right. Now, what I would do here, if the ball was maybe even more above the feet, I'd potentially just actually close, choke down the club a little bit like this. This is going to allow me to take a bit more of a normal posture because the more the club, or the more the ball goes upright, the taller I'm going to be. So choking down here as the ball gets closer sometimes makes it a bit easier to make the connection. But from here, the key thing is just to make a normal golf swing. We're not going to really change too much in terms of the, the swing or anything. We're just going to put a normal golf swing on it. Hopefully we can just get that golf ball starting out to the right and then just bending to the left. So the key thing is really on this, it's the alignment at setup 
but then if it's more severe, obviously the balance. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So nothing too much on this one, just really understand how the ball's going to come off the face and then allow for it. Again, you've got to take all the things into consideration, like the wind, how much the, the, the slope is going to affect it. So if I just started off the corner of that bunker, feel a nice little draw coming on here, Pierce, to that flag. <laughs> the wind's definitely helping. I'm not sure the, the wind's going to be good for you here. And the ball's worked out right, and that's working yeah, in perfectly to the hole. started in the right window. That was very nice. Oof, beautiful. beautiful. About 10, 15 feet. Very that's nice. And I think, look, the key with all of these sort of slopes is understanding what the goal, uh, understanding what the golf board is going to do, but also understanding that you've got to keep your balance because sometimes they can be quite severe. So we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, then make sure you hit that like. Now look, YouTube is just a taste of the coaching that we offer. We've got an amazing coaching plan called Ultimate Irons that has helped so many golfers this year improve their iron play. We go into so much detail, including things like this and other stuff as well. If you want to take a look, make sure you click the link down below and we'd love to see you there.